Now, from the Low Country's news leader, this is Live 5 News. And good Wednesday morning. We are waking up to some warm temperatures for the middle of your work week, Michael. We are also tracking our chances for some scattered thunderstorms later today. Meteorologist Joyce Ovine joining us now with more on the conditions you can expect as you head out the door this morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, ladies. We're going to try not to do a repeat of yesterday, but no promises. A couple of storms expected later today. You can see the rain from yesterday now pushing offshore. There will be a few storms this afternoon, early this evening but it shouldn't be as widespread and they should not be as strong as well. Temperatures though a little bit cooler this morning. This is the good side to getting a lot of rain the evening before is that the next morning you wake up, you head outside. The humidity's been knocked down just a touch in the low 70s with mid 60s to upper 60s back inland. So we'll take that a little bit easier for those morning runs. Now get up uh, out there early because sunshine should lead to quickly warming temperatures. We have started things here at about 1 2 o'clock on future track and that's the time frame where we could start to see a couple of showers and storms pop up and just keep in mind the placement of this is awfully close to the coast so the beaches inland areas both seeing the chance of some scattered showers and storms around for this afternoon early this evening as well once again not as widespread as yesterday and we don't expect as many really strong and nasty storms out there as we got yesterday yesterday's highs up in the mid 90s not as hot today 84 at lunchtime still very warm this afternoon in the upper 80s to around 90 degrees Degrees. After today, rain out of the forecast for a while. We'll talk about how long rain's out of the forecast for coming up in just a couple minutes. So look at your traffic this morning. We do have one update for you. Yesterday, a sinkhole opened on Cumming Street in downtown. This is uh, near Bull Street, and that road has been closed and will uh, indefinitely until they fix that issue there right in the middle of the roadway. Other than that, that's in downtown Charleston. Everything else is looking good on I-26 is out towards College Park Road. We look great there up ahead towards Towards Ashley Phosphate East and westbound lanes both look good. So your drive times are going to be perfect right now. 18 minutes for that trip in Somerville to downtown I-26 eastbound. Just into the first alert desk, Russian President Vladimir Putin has left Russia and is now on his way to the much anticipated meeting with Joe Biden in the Swiss city of Geneva. That's according to Russian state owned broadcaster Russia 24. This will be Biden and Putin's first face to face as leaders. Their conversation is expected to last four to five hours. Putin will arrive to the summit first. He's expected to land in Geneva around 630 our time in the next 10 minutes here on Live 5. We'll have a closer look at that summit, including what Biden and Putin are saying ahead of the meeting and what they're expected to talk about. All MUSC healthcare workers must now be vaccinated. The deadline for that requirement was midnight. Today, we expect to get an updated percentage of just how many employees have been vaccinated. According to MUSC, as of last week, 90% of their healthcare workers were either vaccinated or had submitted a religious or medical reason why they could not be. We also checked with the lawyer about the legality of public entities like MUSC requiring vaccines. An attorney says it's completely legal for a public public employer to require the vaccine, just like it's legal for private businesses. The attorney says it basically boils down to protecting the health and safety of employees. Well, Live 5 News is teaming up with Charleston County to help renters. Today, we're holding a phone bank with the county on their emergency rental assistance program. Now, that federal government, they awarded uh, Charleston County with $12.4 million to provide utility and rental assistance. Today's phone bank will be from 4 until 6.30 p.m. Community organizers are coming together to launch the North Charleston Homeless Task Force. Daniel Seat joins us live now with what this organization aims to do and how you can tune in to their meeting today and get involved. Danielle. Michael, right now, North Charleston does not have a single homeless shelter, but those with this new task force say there could be upwards of 500 homeless people within the city. And this is why they're launching this new nonprofit, the North Charleston Homeless Task Force. Today, several members of the board are officially meeting for the first time to bring together their ideas and decide how and when to have their monthly meetings. Through these meetings, they plan to organize funding for a new homeless shelter, provide food for young kids in need, and get hygiene kits, which they do plan to make for
for the North Charleston police officers to then hand out from their patrol cars. Brandon Trollinger, who's heading up the task force, says this is about a year in the making, and they hope to work with the North Charleston Police Department, city officials, and local faith-based organizations to come together and help those in need. There are various things they're going through, you know, mental illness, you know, substance and alcohol abuse, you know. Some kids are like, you know, you got kids going to school for eight to 10 hours a day, you know, and they, they leave school, you know, their last meal is lunch and you think they're going to like a home, you know, to, to have fun or whatever. Some of these kids are going to vans or their vehicles. The meeting is set for 6 to 7 p.m. this afternoon. You can attend in person at the Life Fit Community Gym in North Charleston. Reporting for you, I'm Danielle C, Live 5 News. Well, tomorrow marks six years since nine parishioners were shot and killed at Mother Emanuel AME Church here in Charleston. The church is holding events to honor the Emanuel Nine this week. Today, there's a virtual Bible study starting at 6 p.m. Then tomorrow, there will be a virtual forgiveness forum. That's going to go from 6 until 9 p.m. There will also be a Juneteenth Freedom Fest Saturday that's happening at the North Charleston Riverfront Park. That will go from 2 until 10. Israel has launched its first airstrikes on Gaza since a ceasefire went into effect nearly a month ago. Coming up, what their military says prompted the attacks. And what we can expect from today's highly anticipated meeting between President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin. All right, we're taking a live view outside as we head towards sunrise. In fact, sunrise is about ready to get started right there as we look live from downtown Charleston across the water. There should be a gorgeous start to the day. Lots of sunshine. We're going to try to make up for how we ended yesterday. A completely different story this morning. We're completely dry. Kids headed out to the bus stop this morning. Skies mostly clear. Pretty comfortable. Temperatures around 70 degrees. We'll take that in the month of June. We've had many mornings mid to upper 70s. A lot muggier and a lot warmer out the door. Now we do have to keep an eye out as the kids head home from school. Could be a couple of showers and storms near the coast again this afternoon. Should not be as strong though as yesterday afternoon and evening showers and storms have packed quite a punch out there. Shouldn't be the case today, although any thunderstorms you have to definitely head indoors uh, and try to get inside as quickly as possible as they do pop up very rapidly this time of the year. Highs today upper 80s to around 90. Yesterday was in the mid 90s, so not as hot, but still pretty warm once again this afternoon. Let's show you you, uh, what's going on with our roads this morning. If you need to head out the door here at 612 rolling over to 613. Uh, we do have a sinkhole that is uh, closed coming street near Bull Street downtown Charleston. Other than that, we look good all the way up and down I 26 this morning. We're showing all green. This is a look uh, starting to get a little bit busier here coming down from College Park Road past University Boulevard in the eastbound lanes. A little bit of haze out there this morning in some of the spots that got the heaviest rainfall as well. Uh, but traffic's moving smoothly here passing Ashley Phosphate. So you drive Time still a great I-26 eastbound Somerville to downtown less than 20 minutes. Aisha. Israel has launched the first airstrikes on Gaza since reaching a truce with Hamas. The Israel Defense Forces say the airstrikes were in response to arson balloons launched from Gaza yesterday. According to reports in Israeli media, those balloons launched from Gaza sparked multiple fires in southern Israel. The Israeli raids come two days after a new coalition government headed by Naftali Bennett took over power Sunday, ending Benjamin Netanyahu's 12-year run as the prime minister there. President Joe Biden is wrapping up his European tour with a high stakes summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Ian Lee is following today's events out of London. President Biden squares off with Russian President Vladimir Putin today. Thank you so much. Thank you. The grand finale of an eight day European tour that Mr. Biden used to shore up support from America's allies. Everybody is absolutely thrilled to see you. What you demonstrate is that leadership is partnership. Today's summit takes place at this 18th century villa on Lake Geneva in Switzerland. The two leaders will first be joined by their foreign ministers and an interpreter, and then will open it up for four more aides from each side. All told, the meetings could last four to five hours. I'm going to make clear to President Putin that there are areas where we can't cooperate if he chooses. Among the topics expected to be discussed, Ukraine, election interference, and cyber attacks. There is plenty of proof that a number of cyber attacks in the past few years uh, have come from Russia. Both men have agreed that U.S.-Russian relations are at a low point. 
Mr. Biden is hoping to find areas of mutual interest. He's bright, he's tough, and uh, I have found that uh, he is a, uh, as they say, when he used to play ball, a worthy adversary. The two presidents will hold separate news conferences at the end of the summit. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. In a provocatively timed move leading up to the summit, the Russian Navy began conducting what it calls its largest exercise since the end of the Cold War, positioning ships and long-range bombers just 300 to 500 miles west of Hawaii. This morning, we're getting a look at new photos of a dinner party Vice President Kamala Harris hosted for all 24 female senators. The group, 16 Democrats and 8 Republicans total, were required to test negative for COVID-19 to attend. The dinner marked the first time Harris hosted the nation's lawmakers since moving into her Naval Observatory residence two months ago. The brother of an Olympic gold medalist is being acquitted of charges connected to a deadly shooting. Back in May, a mistrial was declared in the murder trial of Tevin Biles Thomas, Simone Biles' brother. In a retrial yesterday, a judge granted the defense motion for acquittal due to a lack of evidence. While well, Biles Thomas was acquitted of those charges against him, which included voluntary manslaughter as well as a felony assault. Now the deadly shooting happened back in 2018 in Ohio. A man has been found guilty of murder in a mass shooting at a school near Denver, Colorado. Devin Erickson was 18 years old at the time of that shooting. One person was killed, eight others were injured. Prosecutors say Erickson wanted to kill a room full of classmates. The defense team, however, says he was a troubled teen who was on drugs. The jury found the suspect guilty of 45 other charges, including conspiracy to commit murder. At least 11 of the charges have mandatory sentences, which means Erickson will get life in prison without parole. Another student also charged in the 2019 shooting pled guilty last year to 17 counts. A video going around the internet shows Maryland police using a taser on a teenager while enforcing a vaping va a ban. A warning, this may be hard for some of you to watch. The tasing happened just over a week ago. Ocean City police say they stopped 18 year old Tazir Griffin for vaping. Police say Griffin became disorderly and threatened to kill them. Officers say they tased him after he spit on them and resisted arrest. A woman, though, who took this video says Griffin backed up and put his hands in the air after police grabbed his shirt. She also says they ordered him to take off his backpack. Officers found a knife in his backpack. Griffin is now out of jail on a $3,000 bond. Google is offering a new program for teachers to show them how to use their products in the classroom. Still ahead, how you can apply to become a part of the new initiative. And meteorologist Joyce Ovine has when we could see some scattered thunderstorms today. Ooh, look at that beautiful sunrise. Is that more on that timing coming up? I'm following breaking news out of North Carolina, where Charlotte police say three people have been seriously injured in a crash involving a police car. These are pictures we are just getting from the scene. You can see the front of the police car has been crushed. There's no word yet if the officer is among the injured. Their condition at this hour is unknown. Police say all three of the injured people have been taken to the hospital with serious injuries. It's unclear what led up to this crash. All right, 621 right now. Let's get a look at your weather here as we get started on our Wednesday morning. Checking in on live Super Doppler Max and looks a whole lot better than when you went to bed last night as we were watching those storms. There they were right there, packed with quite a punch. Some very uh, strong storms yesterday afternoon and evening. We gave you that first alert to it yesterday morning. Talked about the potential for the severity of those storms and we issued a first alert weather day to give you that heads up that those storms were going to be out there and they were going to it certainly uh, produced a lot of rainfall, a lot of lightning, a lot of hail yesterday out of those storms, but that's all out of here. As we take a live view over downtown Charleston, sunrise underway, a beautiful start, 70 degrees. The temperature right now, the good side, uh, getting a lot of showers and storms the night before is that it's a little bit cooler in the morning. We'll take that 70 to 71 near the coast. Back inland, we have many of you in the 60s this morning. Now, it won't last long, so we'll enjoy it while we have it, although it won't be quite as hot today. Temp 
temperatures at about 80 degrees, 10 o'clock, 84 at lunchtime. We got an 84 about 9 30, 10 o'clock yesterday morning, so it'll take a little bit longer to get there, but we'll wind up in the upper 80s to around 90 degrees. There will be a couple of hit or miss showers and storms this afternoon. High Monk's Corner about 89, 90 in Somerville, 89 in North Charleston, 87 this afternoon in Mount Pleasant. If you're off to the beaches, keep an eye out. There still could be a couple of storms this afternoon. May start as early as 1, 2 o'clock, so just keep that in mind. UV index very high today. Here's a look at future tracker. Notice how by 2, 3 o'clock we have some showers and storms popping up and they will be close to the coast, so some storms a possibility all the way through sunset, then they fade away. Rain chance about 30% today should be dry Thursday and Friday. Then we'll watch some moisture slowly increase as we go into the upcoming weekend. We will be watching the potential of a uh, tropical disturbance heading northward in the Gulf of Mexico. High risk of development into perhaps a tropical depression as this moves northward. The computer models not showing a whole lot of development out of this. So that is some good news, but it is going to bring a ton of moisture into places like Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi for the start of the weekend. That's Saturday. We're going to be pretty dry over here. The question is how quickly this comes eastward in the exact track of that moisture. So we'll keep an eye on it. Big question mark Sunday into Monday and Tuesday is how much of that moisture makes its way in our direction. In the meantime, we're going to be drying out after today. Upper 80s to around 90 for the rest of the work week. 92 Saturday, mainly dry and a couple of showers and storms possible on Sunday. Let's see how the roads look for you this morning. If you're headed out right now, things look pretty good. I 26 526 shaping up pretty nicely. This is out towards Long Point Road in Mount Pleasant over the other side of town. West Ashley approaching the Westmoreland Bridge. No delays right now. We're accident free on 526. So your drive times are perfect between West Ashley and Mount Pleasant and drive time right now. If you're headed out the door in Somerville to get to downtown on I 26 18 minutes. Governor Henry McMaster says the money coming into our state from the latest COVID-19 relief bill is quote transformative and enormous. In total, the state will receive $8.8 billion from the American Rescue Plan. Yesterday, the governor, along with other state leaders with the Accelerate SC Task Force, considered recommendations for the money. This is a breakdown of some of that money. $2.5 billion for the state, $1.6 billion for local governments, $3.5 billion for education and child care with 2.2 billion for K through 12 and half a billion for higher education. A major tech giant is partnering with the state to train teachers across South Carolina. Google says it will train 1000 public school teachers who use Google as a part of the learning management system. Google is offering to te get teachers level one certification so they can learn how to properly use Google products in the classroom. Any teacher interested can apply for that training. We have a link under the big red box on live5news.com. Well, if you're looking for something fun to do with your dad this Father's Day weekend, Patriots Point Naval and Maritime Museum, they're offering free admission to all dads. The museum is also encouraging you to check out the new guided captain's tour. That's $15 and not included with admission. They're open from 9 a.m. until 6.30 p.m. on Sunday. After the break, the charges a low country couple is facing for their roles in the Capitol insurrection. 629 right now. Let's check in on your weather this morning. Beautiful sunrise looking out from downtown Charleston across the water to Mount Pleasant. Gorgeous start to our day. So the clouds and the rain from yesterday evening, obviously long gone. We're starting out very comfortable this morning. Now let's go through today, giving it the green light until we get into the afternoon. There could be a couple of showers and storms mid afternoon. So just keep an eye out for that. Shouldn't be as widespread as yesterday. Temperatures going up into the 80s by the time we hit lunchtime in the mid to upper 80s for highs this afternoon. Not as hot as yesterday when we were up in the mid 90s, but still hot enough for you if you're working outside. 89 tomorrow. Check out the next three days. Rain's going out of the forecast for Thursday and Friday and only a small chance as we start out the weekend on Saturday. High temperatures start to climb though once again back up into the 90s. Let's check in on the roads this morning. You're headed out the door at 630. Things are looking pretty good. We're not finding any problems out there. I 26 this morning looks really good. 61 Dorchester Road 52 all looks great. Cars going away from you here. College Park Road exit I-26 and then up ahead towards the 52 connector. Plenty of room for you to jump in with the rest of the folks right now. 18 minutes Somerville to downtown. No delays on I-26 and 526, by the way, between West Ashley and Mount Pleasant. Not showing any accidents or slowdowns. Michael. 
Thank you, Joey. New developments now in a double homicide investigation in Colleton County. We now know the timeline of events that unfolded the night of June 7th in Islandton. Officials with the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division say Alex Murdoch called 911 just after 10 p.m. He told the Colleton County Dispatch Center he returned to family property located along Moselle Road to find the bodies of his wife, Margaret, and his son, Paul, shot outside. Colleton County Sheriff's deputies responded to find them both shot and called sled agents in at about 1030. Sled Low Country Regional agents didn't get to the scene until just before midnight and sled crime scene agents didn't get there until after midnight. Those agents worked through the night into that morning and gave evidence to the sled's forensic lab, which immediately began processing and testing the evidence. Sled officials say the agency is continuing to pursue all leads and the investigation is active and ongoing. A Berkeley County couple is out on bond facing charges after authorities say they stormed the U.S. Capitol during the insurrection. Yesterday, John Getzinger Jr. and Stacy Getzinger appeared in federal court on charges for knowingly entering a restricted building and violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. An FBI investigative report obtained by the Huffington Post detailed four people had contacted the FBI tip line to report the couple traveling from Hanahan to take part in the riots. They were were booked in the Charleston County Jail yesterday morning, but have since been released after posting a $75,000 bond each. A South Carolina solicitor says an amended death certificate ruling the death of a man at the Charleston County Jail as a homicide is not evidence and is typically not part of the case. In a statement regarding Jamal Sutherland's amended death certificate, solicitor Scarlett Wilson says in order for the state to hold someone criminally responsible for another's death, the state must not only prove the proximate cause of death, but also that the accused had the requisite criminal intent while acting unlawfully. Jamal Sutherland died back in January shortly after being tased at the jail. The coroner initially ruled the manner of his death undetermined, but the family's lawyer sent us an amended death certificate changing his manner of death to homicide. The solicitor says the word homicide does not necessarily mean a crime took place. A Somerville man is facing charges for the sexual exploitation of a minor. The Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force arrested Hayward Crimmins. Investigators say Crimmins sent sexually explicit material to a minor. He faces up to 10 years in prison if he is convicted. MUSC Sean Jenkins Children's Hospital is getting some national recognition. It is the only children's hospital in South Carolina to be ranked in U.S. News and World Report's Best Children's Hospital Survey. Seven of ten of the hospital's programs ranked in the top 50 nationally, while five of its programs ranked in the top 10 for the Southeast region. The survey looks at data from nearly 200 medical centers that measure patient safety, infection prevention, and adequate nurse staffing. Just into the first alert desk, Russian President Vladimir Putin has just landed ahead of his much-anticipated meeting with President Joe Biden in the Swiss city of Geneva. This is a live look from the airport. This will be Biden's first meeting with Putin face-to-face -face as leaders. Their conversation is expected to last four to five hours. Again, live pictures right now from Geneva. Putin is expected to arrive at the summit location first. That meeting is expected to get underway at 7 this morning, our time. Coming up, when Royal Caribbean is expected to resume cruise launches and sailings after a COVID-19 outbreak among crew members. And why a new study might have you rethinking putting on that morning makeup. 638 right now we're drying out this morning. You're waking up looking outside. Notice the sky is cleared out in the wake of showers and storms from yesterday. Those are all out of here. No threat of any rainfall this morning should be a sunny and a pretty comfortable start. You'll step outside this morning, open up the front door and notice it's not quite as warm and as as muggy as it's been in recent days. That's because all the rain left us a little bit rain cooled this morning, mid to upper 60s inland about 70 along the coast. Now we return with the chance of rain as we go into the afternoon started here on future tracker about one two o'clock all the way through about sunset this evening. A couple of hit or miss showers and storms. In the meantime, lots of sunshine 84 by noon. We're in the upper 80s this afternoon, not as hot and also not as many storms, but still be on the lookout for one or two of those later on today. We're looking out for any problems areas out on the roadways, but not finding any this morning. That's certainly some good news as we get a check of your first alert traffic 61 this morning looks good. Dorchester Road all the way past the uh, uh, 
going towards Joint Base Charleston, also on 52 coming in from Monk's Corner through Goose Creek, Down Rivers Avenue in North Charleston. No problems there. This is a live view out right now, mile marker 205. So this is University Boulevard passing that. Cars going away here are in the eastbound lanes that get busiest obviously in the morning. Right now everything looks good to go. We're accident free 19 minutes Somerville to downtown. Michael. Royal Caribbean is being forced to postpone the inaugural sailing of one of its cruise ships after eight crew members tested positive for COVID-19. The Odyssey of the Seas scheduled Caribbean voyages out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, were originally set to begin July 3rd, but are now being pushed back to the end of the month. Even though all of the Odyssey's 1400 crew members received the vaccine, the positive COVID test came before the vaccines were fully effective. So out of an abundance of caution, the July cruises will now be delayed and passing Passengers who are booked on the Odyssey will be given other options. Meanwhile, Royal Caribbean will continue to launch its other cruise ships from ports in Texas, Seattle and Florida this summer. The cruise line does not strongly recommend its vaccine. Uh, it does strongly recommend rather its passengers be fully vaccinated. New video this morning shows firework displays playing out across the state of New York. Last night's display celebrated most of the state's COVID-19 restrictions being lifted. They also honored first responders. In addition to those fireworks, many New York buildings, including the Empire State Building at Niagara Falls, were lit blue and gold. In Washington, the Senate has unanimously passed a bill to establish Juneteenth as a federal holiday. It still needs to pass the House before going to President Joe Biden's desk. The bill designates June 19th, 2021 as Juneteenth Independence Day. It's in recognition of June 19th, 1865, the date on which news of the end of slavery reached slaves in southwestern states. This comes after Senator Ron Johnson, a Republican from Wisconsin, announced he would no longer object to the measure moving forward like he did last year, paving the way for its passage. Any one senator can block the passage of a measure by unanimous consent. New this morning, we are learning that Highway Patrol has arrested a man in connection with the hit and run death of a Greenville County teacher. The South Carolina Highway Patrol says Mantavius McMorris is charged with hit and run with death, reckless homicide and other traffic offenses. The crash happened last week in Greenville County. Officials say Carly Sokup was entering a crosswalk when she was killed. McMorris has been booked into the Greenville County Detention Center. The Transportation Security Administration will be performing a security evaluation of the Colonial Pipeline next month. Colonial was in the process of scheduling the review with the TSA just as it was hit with a crippling ransomware attack last month. Colonial says two things, dealing with the pandemic and a move to a new building, slowed down its ability to respond to TSA. In the review, TSA will be making sure Colonial systems and security services are, quote, designed, built, and operated in a reliable and resilient manner. A new study claims more than half of all cosmetics and makeup in the U.S. and Canada have chemicals that could lead to serious health issues like cancer and reduce birth weight. Researchers from the University of Notre Dame found the poisonous chemical fluorine in 56% of foundations and eye products, 48% of lip products, and 47% of mascaras. A bipartisan group of senators has introduced legislation to ban the chemicals use in beauty products. The ex-wife of Amazon CEO is one of the richest women in the world, and now she could go down in history as one of the most generous. Mackenzie Scott, she has donated $2.74 billion to nearly 300 charity organizations. Scott listed the organizations in a blog post on Medium yesterday. She says they focus on areas that have been historically underfunded and overlooked, like the arts and combating racial discrimination. In her blog post, Scott also says she wants to de-emphasize privileged voices. According to Forbes, Scott's fortune is valued at $59 billion. If you live in Charleston County and have questions about getting help with paying rent and utilities, you are in luck. Up next, we'll have how you can get financial aid ahead of our Live 5 phone bank happening later this afternoon. And a Mount Pleasant group is looking to restore the historic Sweetgrass Basket Stands at Line North Highway 17. How you can volunteer to help out. Ahead on CBS This Morning, what's at stake in today's historic summit between President Biden and Vladimir Putin? Plus, Tina Knowles Lawson, Beyonce and Solange's mom, on the importance of Juneteenth. We'll see you at 7. Now.
your first alert forecast from Live 5 News. What a noisy end of the day yesterday. Strong storms raced through the area yesterday afternoon and evening. You can see those right there now pushing offshore late in the evening as you went to bed. Still probably raining for many of you, but since then we've been quieting it down and notice even the clouds have cleared out as you're waking up and looking outside. Notice it's very bright as you wake up this morning. Yes, the clouds are gone. It should be a nice sunny start to our day. Still, there may be some tree limbs down or a little bit of debris out on the roadways as you head out of your neighborhood neighborhood this morning, at least some puddles out there for many of you. 70 degrees the temperature right now. So as you head out the door this morning, one thing you'll definitely notice is the temperatures down a little bit. The humidity down a little bit as well. Not a huge drop, but maybe enough. Hopefully enough that you'll notice it this morning, maybe helping out with the morning run out toward the beaches. Warmer spots about 72 73 degrees, but many of you inland in the 60s and we'll have this for a couple more mornings. Temperatures in the 60s. Now we will warm up pretty quickly. Not as fast as yesterday, so it won't get as hot as quickly as yesterday. You can see temperatures lunchtime going up toward the mid 80s. We'll be in the upper 80s to around 90 for highs in the afternoon. May become a little bit rain cooled in a few spots late this afternoon, this evening. Still can't rule out a couple of isolated showers and storms today. About 89, 90 for most inland areas, mid to upper 80s out at the beaches. Taking a live view behind there. Out towards Folly Beach this morning, 85. Your forecast high should be a nice beach day. Just keep an eye out maybe as early as 1, 2 o'clock could have a couple of showers and storms popping up. So just be uh, weather aware out there. Low tide this morning coming up in a few minutes at 7 o'clock. High tide will follow early this afternoon. You can see that rain popping up and that chance of rain is pretty close to the coastline. So there could be a few thunderstorms out there. Kids get out of school working outside today or driving home from work. Now we'll keep that rain chance through about sunset. After that rain chance is completely out of the forecast for the rest of the work week. No rain expected tomorrow or Friday. Gradually as we go through the upcoming weekend may start to see the chance of rain go back up a little bit. We'll be keeping a close eye down in the Gulf of Mexico. Now this isn't a storm system that has any threat of uh, making a landfall here or developing and moving on shore with any significant winds, but you can see this red area. That's where the path is for potential development. Now as all of this comes northward, whether or not it develops into a tropical system doesn't really matter. The biggest impact will be some rainfall. In fact, you can see how that rain came northward, Louisiana and Alabama, Mississippi. This is Saturday evening. Now that's going to leave the moisture associated with that well back to our west, but we do have to keep an eye. See how quickly this comes eastward. Some computer models you can see the darker greens indicating that it stays north and west of us through Sunday afternoon, but we may start to see at least a little bit of an increase in our rain chances and then Monday we'll have to wait and see exactly where it's placed. A lot of uncertainty is first of all whether or not something ever develops into a tropical depression or tropical storm and then where does that moisture go down the road so we'll keep you updated with that just the thinking is Sunday into Monday Tuesday a question mark as far as when that moisture if it makes it in here when does it make it in here because we know tropical moisture it could lead to some heavy rainfall at times 89 today no threat of uh, yesterday doing that over again today but it does look like we'll still have to dodge a few thunderstorms then rain out of the forecast Thursday, Friday, Saturday for the start of the weekend. Looks good. 92 degrees, very small chance of rain, and then that rain chance goes up from Sunday and Father's Day. Only about 30%, but better chance Monday and Tuesday. Look at your roads here as we head towards 7 o'clock with that morning drive, and things are looking pretty good. Looks like we have a brand new accident in on I-26. This is out past the Dexton area. That just popped up, so I'll try to get more information on that for you. Uh, heads up, there was a sinkhole that developed yesterday on Cumming Street down near Bull Street. Uh, that's in downtown Charleston. That roadway is closed indefinitely until they can fix that area. 526 passing Dorchester Road right here in North Charleston over towards Long Point Road exit in Mount Pleasant. Everything looks good on 526. No delays between West Ashley and Mount Pleasant and I-26 Somerville to downtown right now. Looks pretty good at 19 minutes. We're awaiting the arrival of President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin at their high stakes meeting in the Swiss city of Geneva. This is a live look at the 18th century villa where the summit will soon get underway. This will be Biden and Putin's first face to face as leaders. Their conversation is expected to last four to five hours. The summit's agenda includes election interference, cyber attacks and Ukraine. 
Putin is running a few minutes late, Biden is already in Switzerland. That meeting is expected to get underway shortly, just after 7 a.m. our time. The two leaders are not planning to share any meals together, and they will not hold a joint news conference. Instead, Presidents Biden and Putin will hold solo press conferences after the summit. Life 5 News is teaming up with Charleston County to help renters. Today, we are holding a phone bank with the county on their emergency rental assistance program. The federal government awarded Charleston County with $12.4 million to provide utility and rental assistance. Today's phone bank is from 4 to 6.30 p.m. Community organizers are coming together to launch the North Charleston Homeless Task Force. Now, North Charleston does not have a single homeless shelter, but those with this new nonprofit say there's upwards of 500 homeless people within the city. Today, several members of the board are officially meeting for the first time to bring together their ideas and decide how and when to have their monthly meetings. Through these meetings, they plan to organize funding for a new homeless shelter, provide food and young people kids in for kids in need and get hygiene kits, which they plan to make for North Charleston police officers to hand out from their patrol cars. Now the meeting is set to run from six until seven o'clock tonight. You can attend in person at the Life Fit Community Gym or you can watch through Zoom or Facebook Live. We do have all that information you need on our website. The town of Mount Pleasant is looking to revitalize a cultural staple in town that dates back centuries here in the low country. Yes, a very important staple. Summer Hector is live this morning with more on what Mount Pleasant's Culture, Arts and Pride Commission is doing to improve the sweet grass basket stands and how you can help out. Good morning. Michael, Aisha, good morning. Earlier this week, the Culture, Arts and Pride Commission approved plans to beautify and restore all the sweetgrass basket stands that line North Highway 17 here in Mount Pleasant. Now, this CAP commission, they say the sweetgrass basket craft is unique to the low country and represents one of the oldest West African art forms in America. Their goal is to eventually redo all the stands along Highway 17 and make them look more uniform. Uniform. The commission says many of the stands are still owned by families who have given permission to repair them. Families are able to help out and choose the colors of the new paint. Now the CAP commission plans to start on July 10th with the four sweetgrass basket stands that sit across from the entrance on Boone Hall on Highway 17. Now the CAP commission is looking for volunteers to help with these repairs. Now if you want to get involved, a link to email is on live5news.com. Just click on this story. Now the Culture Arts and Pride Commission also says they'll post a sign up link on their Facebook page. They're planning to do that in the next few days. Now they did tell me some local home improvement stores have donated supplies already to help with these renovations. I'm live in Mount Pleasant this morning. Summer Hector, Live 5 News. An area in Berkeley County won't be getting a new truck stop anytime soon. The truck stop was being considered for College Park Road. Last night, the Berkeley County Zoning Appeals Board denied an appeal by the developer who said the county wasn't fair to deny the request. A proposal for a Parker's Kitchen gas station and truck stop at the corner of College Park Road and Treeland Drive has been getting a lot of pushback from the community. The county previously denied the request for a truck stop and at last night's meeting, the Zoning Appeals Board decided the county was right to deny the request. The developer could decide to re-enter the process and build just a gas station without a truck stop. They say they are still figuring out their next steps. All right, an update on your traffic. We told you about an accident a short time ago. I was going to get more information on this for you. I-26 eastbound reported in right at Jetburg Road. So that's exit 194 before you get to the next in area. Otherwise, I-26, knock on wood, looking really, really good to College Park Road here. Up ahead to 52 connector, Ashley Phosphate getting a little bit busier, uh, but not too congested out there whatsoever. Somerville to downtown at 19 minutes. If you have to travel 526 between West Ashley and Mount Pleasant, we are showing no slowdowns right now. Let's keep it that way. Let's see what's going on outside. Let's keep it this way. Sunshine outside in the wake of yesterday's storm. So if you headed outside early this morning for an early morning walk or jog, looks good. Temperature starting out around 70, headed up close to 90 degrees. Not as hot or as stormy as yesterday, but still a few storms possible this afternoon and pretty warm out there. Just yeah. pretty warm, 89. Yeah, not not too bad. Nah. We'll take it, right? <laughs> I'll go on another bike ride today. <laughs> <laughs> you should. Have a good one. <laughs>